Today, I want to talk to you about a very interesting concept of audio and music production. Phase is a concept that describes a specific point in time, and in our case, a specific point in time in a sound wave cycle. In this video, I'm going to break down this concept, give you some real life applications, and also talk about some other closely related concepts. You may be familiar with the term polarity. This term is often confused with phase, but they mean different things. I'll cover that as well in this video. Also, if you find these sound concept videos helpful, I'll add a card in the top right hand corner linking to more. But for now, let's talk about phase. First off, to explain what phase is, you need to understand something about the nature of sound. Sound is cyclical. It's a physical phenomenon, a cycle of compressing and rarefacting molecules. The best way to think of sound is to think of a slinky as it condenses, which is known as compression, and then stretches, rarefaction, and phase is used to measure where in the cyclical process the sound wave is at a given point in time. Because we are measuring something cyclical, we use degrees to describe where in the cycle the sound wave is, and it's relative to a predetermined point in the sound wave cycle. So what is it about phase that relates and affects what we do as music producers? Now, usually you are not going to be worried about what part of the cycle a sound wave is in at any given point in time. However, phase can become an issue when we start recording or mixing multiple versions of a single sound source. It is a very regular thing in music production to build a sonic element with multiple sound waves and attempts to make that element sound bigger. You want everything to sound full, and this is sometimes tough to do with a single instance of that sound source. So you will either use multiple microphones on that sound source, or you'll send a version of that recorded sound through a different processing chain. When you do this, the sound wave takes different paths, which naturally takes different amounts of time. What this results in is two out of phase sound waves, which has a direct effect on how we hear the recreated sound. One of the biggest issues that occurs from these phase problems is comb filtering. Comb filtering gets its name from its appearance on a frequency response chart. But how and why does this happen? Let's think about it. A sound wave is not a perfect sine wave. If you take a musical signal such as a guitar, that signal is going to be made up of multiple sound waves of different frequencies and amplitudes. So if we take the duplicate of this complex sound wave and delay it so that they are out of phase, all of these different frequencies that makes up the sound of the guitar will also be affected. Some of these frequencies will be boosted, some will be attenuated, and that is how we end up with this comb filtering. This is why you should really take every step you can to eliminate any phase issues as it will really help the clarity of your project. Let's talk about some direct applications in which phase issues will occur in music and sound production. Recording itself presents a lot of potential for phase issues to occur. More times than not, when recording an acoustic instrument such as a guitar, piano, or even drums, you'll find yourself wanting to use more than one microphone to capture more of that instrument. As previously mentioned, once you start to add multiple microphones, phase issues come into play. Unless you meticulously place your microphones in a scenario like this, there's a high chance that the sound from the source will reach each microphone at slightly different times. And when these signals are reproduced through your monitors, these sources will also be played back at slightly different times. A very common example of this is when recording bass. A common practice is to record the bass through a direct input in addition to the bass amp. If you decided to blend these two signals together, there would most likely be some phase issues due to the fact that it takes a different amount of time for the bass signal to run its course through the DI than the amp path. There are several ways to fix this within your digital audio workstation, all of which just involve realigning the waveforms so that the positive and negative cycles match up. As long as you are aware of these issues, they are pretty easy to fix and can greatly help the clarity of your mix. One way that you can preemptively reduce phase issues while recording is by using the 3 to 1 microphone rule. This rule states that if you are using two microphones on one sound source, they should be at least three times the distance from each other than they are away from the sound source. So for example, let's say we are recording a grand piano and we want to use two microphones so that we can fully capture the high and low end of the instrument. We start by placing these microphones three feet away from the strings on the piano. So that means to avoid as many phase issues between these two microphones, they should be at least nine feet away from each other. This is definitely a good rule to keep in mind as it greatly helps cut back on phase issues and gives you a clearer recording from the get-go. So we talked about the applications of phase when recording. But did you know that you can create phase issues from mixing as well? 
Every time you send a channel to a mix bus, you are once again blending multiple versions of that same signal. And guess what? Both of those signals most likely have a different processing chain, meaning that phase issues can start to affect the result of this process. This is a pretty easy fix with delay compensation, but is something to be aware about during the mixing process. I think the thing to pull out of all of this is that when you have two signals from the same source, no matter what the signal chain is, always check to see how aligned the waveforms are. So there is a very common misconception about the terms polarity and phase. I'm sure you have seen this button, either on software, hardware processors, or consoles. This is the polarity flip switch, and it flips the polarity of a sound when it's engaged. Polarity is often confused with phase because they do have some relation. The polarity of a waveform describes the part of the cycle the waveform is in, positive or negative. Is the waveform in the compression stage or the rarefaction stage? I put another card in the top right hand corner to link a video explaining the nature of sound if you want more detail on the subject. So you could think about the polarity flip switch as changing the phase by 180 degrees, but phase is not defined by whether the waveform is, is positive or negative. It just relates to the cyclical degree of a sound wave. Phase is more of a measurement where polarity describes a physical state. So that's gonna be it for this video. We talked about what phase actually is, how it can apply to the recording and mixing process. We also talked about how it is related to, but commonly confused with the polarity flip switch. I hope this clarified this important sound characteristic and gave you some ideas on how to fix these common issues in your productions. Let me know if you like this video and think about hitting that subscribe button for more music and audio related content. Thanks to all of those who've given me feedback on my videos. I greatly appreciate it, everyone. And until next time, have a good day.